Let's be honest, some of you watch my channel for my reactions to some of the comments. So here's another one. This latest comment is actually rather dangerous, particularly if you pay any attention to it whatsoever. Paul says, just don't pay and ignore them. Referring to the parking charge notices that I was talking about in my previous video. So let me give you a hypothetical for a moment and it might sound a little bit ridiculous, but it's perfectly plausible. It may well happen. And this is what will happen or could happen if you just don't pay and ignore them as Paul suggests. Let's say that you didn't visit a car park and you didn't enter and leave without paying. In fact, you were nowhere to be seen. In fact, maybe it's a completely different part of the country that you've never been to. However, let's say that the ANPR or the person running said cameras or the person taking the manual note of number plates coming in and out of that car park get it wrong and they get one digit different and they end up with your name and address from the DVLA. So just to summarize, you never parked there, you've never been there, but they got the number plate wrong. So they now have your name, your address, because that's the registration plate that returns those details from the DVLA. So they post you a parking charge notice because they believe it was you who didn't pay. Therefore, they are chasing you for a fee for breach of their terms and conditions of parking, breach of contract, therefore they want their £85 from you. You open the mail, you look at it and think, I've never been there, this is ridiculous, I'm going to ignore it, as Paul suggests. So you ignore it. Then they send you another one saying that it's now a little bit more because we've taken time to chase you and so on. But you get the next letter and you think, I'm still going to ignore it, as Paul suggests, because you've never been there. Then perhaps they take the step of saying, well, if you don't pay it, we're going to sue you for it. And again, you take Paul's suggestion and think that this is ridiculous and you're just not going to do anything about it. You're going to ignore it. Then you get a claim form through the post from the court served on you with a response pack to say that this company is claiming this, whatever it might be, hundred and something pounds from you by this point. You might still take Paul's advice and think that this is ridiculous and not do anything about it and ignore it. What's going to happen then is your time frame for filing an acknowledgement of service or defense is going to run out and the company is going to get judgment in default. Judgment in default of you responding to the claim. Then, however ridiculous it might sound, the company is going to have a judgment against you. They become the judgment creditor. You become the judgment debtor. However unmeritorious the underlying claim was in the first instance, which you could have easily dealt with either potentially by responding to the company and telling them that they've got it wrong, or at the very least by replying to the claim in court to say you weren't there on such a date, you've never been there, and in fact they've got the number plate wrong, so it couldn't have been you anyway. The court would have probably sided with you in that instance and dismissed their claim. However, you didn't do that, you ignored it, as Paul suggested, so you might end up with a judgment against you. Now, let's say that they apply then for enforcement methods. They might apply to order you to attend court to answer questions about your bank details and things like that. Because if you fail to pay a judgment, they can make an application to the court to order you to attend court to explain why you haven't paid it. At this point, you might decide, well, now is time to answer and tell the court that this really shouldn't have been ordered against me in the first place. So by this point, you, you want to what's technically known as setting the judgment aside. You want to set the judgment aside because you actually now want to fight it because you don't agree with it because it's ridiculous, remember. And in order to set the judgment aside, you'll have to make an application, which at today's prices will be £275 to file the application. Uh, you'll have to draft it with evidence in support. And if you don't know how to do that, you'll need a lawyer to do it for you. And without doing that, of course, the county court judgment, a CCJ commonly known, is going to be on your credit file, is going to ruin your credit record. 
you will struggle to get any new borrowing, any new loans, or even a remortgage at a sensible rate because the banks will take any excuse to increase the interest rate on your mortgage at any opportunity they get. And then of course, you're going to have to demonstrate to the court that you do have a reasonable prospect of defending the claim. But even then, it's the court's discretion and the court is going to consider whether you acted promptly, uh, the strength of your evidence, and so on and so forth. So as I said at the outset, or at least I implied at the outset, I wouldn't be taking Paul's advice and ignoring it. Um, whether you think it's ridiculous or not, however unmeritorious it might be, even in my fictitious scenario here, where it just simply wasn't you, you've never been there, you still need to respond to the claim and show why the claim should fail. So in the strongest possible guidance, because none of this is legal advice, but in the strongest possible guidance, please don't ignore these things. It will just make it worse. In the meantime, thanks for watching.